My name is Catchy and thank you so much for sticking with us as we got some technical issues underway. If you're just joining us, Climate Fridays is an initiative bringing together First Nations, School Striker for Climate Change and the Australian music scene, um, energising each other in a fight against fossil fuels. I'm streaming to you from Nam, but in acknowledgement of all of us, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which we work and live and recognise their continuing connection to land, water and community. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. And tonight I'm joined by Lisa Mitchell and we're going to be experiencing her amazing music right now. And Hey Lisa, how are you? Hi, Hi, <laughs> how are you? It's been a bit of an old deal, but we're here and I'm so excited to be speaking to you because one of the questions that I normally ask people is how they got into activism. And I think for myself, I've been involved in a more kind of like passive um, activism kind of behind the scenes. And it wasn't really until I got to speak to you that I feel like I've started to be more active in um, the fight against uh, climate change and against uh, the use of fossil fuels. Um, so, but I would like to ask you, what was your introduction and how did this become an important, why and how did this become an important issue for you? Wow, um, that makes me really happy that um, I was some kind of um, part in your, yeah, more activeness. Um, I, I was super lucky and I got to go up to um, the incredible Heron Island, which is off the um, coast of Australia. Um, in the on the Great Barrier Reef, um, there's a research center there, a climate um, science research center, and um, every year the Climate Council, who are an independent body um, who advocate um, for climate justice, basically um, because our government is doing a shocking job at it, um, every year they send a bunch of artists and um, uh, media and just. Um, thinkers up to this research center for a couple of days of um, basically education on just um, yeah how grim things are and the need for um, like cross-disciplinary um, storytelling basically um, to create the, I suppose like the mindsets that we all need to change like transition into the new um, kind of world I suppose yeah Cool. That sounds like such an amazing experience. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, so yeah, but in answer to your question, yeah, that was basically what um, was my kind of first, um, you know, I suppose like devastating. Um, uh, and that was probably like two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, where I really kind of started wanting to um, ask my creativity to become more literal in. Yeah. in um, in its messages. That's amazing. So cool. Um, yeah. And speaking of creativity, I'm going to let you get set the mood for the rest of tonight with your beautiful music. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this is a song that I wrote the day before um, the September, um, the huge school strike um, in Nam or Melbourne. And I just want to say, I want to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people um, who on whose land I um, sit and sing to you now and the song keepers of the Warren Derry. Um, yeah. its way into the mud. I am the day and I am not. I am the light that can't be found. Oh, can you feel it? Oh, I can feel it. Oh, can you feel it? Oh, I can feel it. I 
believe in kindness. I believe in education. I believe in silence. I believe in conversation. I know that love is our human nature. I love the way we are waking up together and I the living and the dying, the mother and the child crying. I am the day and I am not, I am the light that can't be found. But I can feel it. How oh, can you feel it? Oh, I can feel it. How oh, can you feel it? I believe in kindness. I believe in education. I believe in silence. I believe in conversation. I know that love is our human nature. I love the way we are. Waking up together. Can you feel it? I can feel it. Oh, can you feel it? Oh, I can feel it. So beautiful. I feel so honoured to be able to sit in this space and enjoy your amazing music. And we're getting heaps of messages flying through uh, saying, yeah, now it's a party. So talented. We're excited. We love Lisa Mitchell. And even a shout out from your UK fans saying, oh, what a voice and loving this. So shout out to everyone that is tuning in yeah. and keep those messages flowing. We love hearing this kind of stuff. Um, we're going to jump into a conversation now and I'm so excited to reintroduce uh, Tish King, um, C Community Organiser, into the fray on your Friday night. Such an amazing, amazing talent that we have and so glad to speak to you once again. Welcome, Tish. Hello, hello, Nikichi. <laughs> oh, wow, what a ride. <laughs> so hey, this is us living in a digital world. Yeah. <laughs> we can have this and live and give a bit of uh, give, give a bit of laughs to all of our friends that are watching. <laughs> <laughs> Love it so much. We're also going to be joined by School Striker for Climate Change, Natasha Abaya Wikrama, who's uh, dialing in too. Hopefully we'll hear from her. Um, she is uh, having some internet problems, so she'll be bouncing in and out of this conversation. Hello, there you are. How Hi. are you, Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. So nice to have you here. And also something that we were um, bringing up before were your amazing um, earrings that you're wearing tonight. Thank you. My school strike earrings. So yeah. great. <laughs> Um, I was really interested to know how did you get involved in um, activism and bringing your voice to the forefront of wanting change in this country? Well, I mean, like from a really long, young age, like I've always known what climate change was and, you know, because we like learned it at school, it was like on the news, but I wasn't really sure what it was. I just knew it was like really bad um, and I just felt like, you know, I'm a kid, so... I don't really know like how I can like do anything but then like within the past few years like with like school strike for climate like growing and like the movements like growing it like made me like realize like as a school student like 
I still like I have power and you know student power and like I do like have power to make change and so it was just like really cool so I joined School Strike for Climate because I really do want to like create some change and I want to live in like a sustainable future and I just like I want to create a just future for like not only like young people but like achieve first nations justice and workers justice and that's like all things we're fighting for so that was like why i'm like joining the climate movement and yeah that's so great tish i want to um jump to you something that's really amazing is I, I wanted to find out a little bit more about seed organization and what's happened to some of the people that were in the early stages of that um, organization coming together and how how their activism has moved and evolved since um, since Seed started. Yeah, uh, amazing. I'd love to share that. So uh, for those who are just joining us this week in Climate Fridays, my name is Tish King and I am a proud Torres Strait Islander woman with strong connections to Musig and Badu Island. And before I do begin, I would like to acknowledge the space that I am in um, and I would like to acknowledge to the Wurundjeri and surrounding clans of the Kula Nation. Um, I would like to pay my respects to those elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. And I too would like to acknowledge uh, all of my uh, brothers and sisters out there that identify as First Nations in their community and to their nations. Um, so glad that you could be all joining us. Um, so I am the community organiser at SEED and for those who actually don't know who SEED Mob are, we are Australia's first Indigenous youth climate network and we have been building a movement of young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to protect their lands, rivers and oceans from the causes and harmful impacts of climate change. And well, since 2014, we have brought together and built that capacity of young mob from the far corners of country to lead and change their communities and collectively take action on our campaigns, uh, which if for those who don't actually know, um, ours is about no fracking or don't frack the NT, which is, I guess, obviously, uh, you know, here having these conversations about uh, you know anti-fracking and that we do not um you know want our futures to be built on gas and so it's you know for those who don't actually know the work that we are doing you know it really just um we're there to protect our communities and illustrate the importance of water and that water is life uh to the NT mob um and communities down there and so, um, you know, we've been over the last few years, we have had some amazing people that have been a, a part of the movement. And, you know, a lot of a lot of them have come from, you know, because as as um, First Nations to this country, you know, we are inherently, you know, embedded in this country. And so when country is hurting, we are all hurting. Uh, so it was amazing when this first kicked off because we got to be a part of that and share that with other people from uh, different areas that we had it connected to. And, you know, some of those folks um, that are around are like, you know, Neil Morris that is dreaming now. You know, uh, Paul Gorey and his uh, sister Nakaya Gorey, and you know th they're big. You know, doing really great things um, and in their community, and have always been about um, you know giving back to community. And so, I mean, look, there's I only just named a couple, but there's obviously so much more who, without their work and their efforts and their commitment to this movement, see wouldn't be where it is today. Hmm. Do you think it's with these um, brilliant First Nation voices that we're also, as I guess, allies learning more about taking care about the land? And are you seeing that with younger people such as Tash, who's wanting to join an initiative to make sure that our country and um, our climate is safe for the future? Absolutely. Uh, as um, Tasha was sort of saying how she got involved um, and she learned about it at school, I just wish we learned it at school. I didn't have that. And I thought, you know, if, if that was around, I would have been like, yes, jumping on board. And I think that's one of me, that's been one of the best things about food. It's allowed a platform to elevate the voices of Aboriginal and Torres Islander people, which mm. has importantly been able to give us the confidence yeah. to, uh, to speak up about truth. Because for so long and for all that intergenerational trauma, it's been something that's hindered us for such a long time. And so 
um, you know, by our amazing leaders uh, that built Seed, Larissa Baldwin, who's now at Get Up, and Millie Telford, our national director. You know, they really encouraged us, supported us, really, um, I guess, gave us that confidence to really speak up, and it's been incredible. And you know, when we just kicked off our uh, round two of our fellowship and already, you know, we're hearing amazing stories where, you know, especially during this time, we can just able to connect and share our voice and the, our one love for our earth. Yeah, that's beautiful. Tash, can I ask you, after joining School Strike for Climate, do you feel more empowered and like you have a voice when it comes to talking about your future and, and what you want and expect from politicians and the government? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I just feel a lot more empowered because, like, it's a lots of young people coming together and we're all just empowering each other. Um, and we've already seen lots of, like, change that, like, we've created within the community and, like, sometimes politically. So I think it's also just, like, yeah, I definitely feel really powerful as, like, a young woman just, like, fighting for, like, change um, and just sort of, like, fighting for our futures. And I think... Definitely, as well as, like, because we get to, like, see the change that we're creating yeah. as well, which is really Yeah, that's amazing. And one of the um, big events that you're putting on is happening on September 25th. I'd love if you can talk about that because we're in September now and it's only a few weeks away. Yeah, um, so basically I'm sure lots of people are aware but our current COVID commission is looking for a gas-led recovery, which is like a fossil fuel. So it kind of also relates to like um, SEED's campaign about fracking in the Northern Territory, so they connect really well. Um, and like we are working with SEED as well with this um, mobilisation. So essentially this um, gas mobilisation is about or this... Um, like national is going to be a national day of action, um, sort of fighting and demanding for a just like a green transition and a renewable transition. Um, so it's looking for like jobs and justice to come out of this COVID recovery and not um, not a gas led recovery. Mm -hmm. um, and so like all over Australia, there'll be some events near you um you can like sort of look on our website for an event near you but also for our fellow victorians we have an online rally and some digital actions that will be happening during the day where they'll be either like calling mps and writing to people um so yeah it's just like a huge national day of action just like targeting um lots of politicians telling them like we do not want this gas recovery we want a green recovery from covid we want to be you know, turning a right, like a green leaf um, and, you know, paving the future for like young people. Yeah. Tasha getting a lot of love on the message board. In fact, people are writing in Tash, 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 Western City Gang, beautiful, power, uh, sorry, beautiful, powerful energy here with heaps of love hearts and rock signs. And speaking of rock and I guess music, we're talking here a lot about giving strength to voice and Lisa I'd love to know how that feels from a performer's perspective and being able to talk about these uh, broader national themes to to your audience. I think the great thing um, about musicians speaking up about climate um, in particular um, is that it normalizes uh, the conversation. And so I think the more that we are hearing um, people that we recognise talking about climate justice and First Nations justice, then the, it just normalises it and it makes it, um, yeah, it just makes it, uh, keeps yeah. on people's minds. And keeping on people's minds, there is a new initiative that is starting up. Um, it's a peer-to-peer -peer campaign called Speak Up and you can um, reach out to it on speakupforclimate.com.au and basically it's a part of the climate justice movement. It's involving uh, 50,000 if not more conversations happening across the country and it's also there to help raise funds for SEED and for the Australian Youth Climate Coalition. Already it's almost raised $10,000 and it's yet to kick off officially. Um, Tish, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about this event. I know that you'll be um, doing some discussions yourself, so I'd love to hear about those. 
Oh. <laughs> I'm muting myself and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm so silly. <laughs> um, no, exactly just what uh, Lisa just said. Like, it's about having um, conversations to normalize the, you know, the severity of our uh, this global crisis. And so that's exactly right. C together with AYCC have come together for our uh, year fundraiser to really drive and actually have these critical conversations. And pretty much because of the landscape we're in, we thought, you know, we have to think outside the box and think about how we can do this and still drive a movement in this virtual world. And it's, it is about just having those yarns with your friends, your families, your peers. You know, the reality is we cannot ignore what is happening in this country and it's time to speak up. Exactly what Tash just said. You know, it's it's coming together and standing in solidarity with other organisations to tell, you know, the Morrison government uh, like not to use this uh, this pandemic as a scapegoat to you know drive our future. Honestly, I don't want, not want to use public money to, to to fund my future because that that that's not what I want. I do not want a gas led recovery, and it's it's discussing you know giving public handouts to the dirty gas industry. I'm sure others here don't want that. And so all while pushing ahead with cuts to social support payments that will force millions of people into poverty. Like we need to be investing in our communities and really not and not dirty gas projects um, that'll destroy our climate and our futures. And so, you know, it's it's about having those discussions, sharing that awareness and normalizing what the reality is for us. And so, um, as you said, Nikechi, it's, uh, we're so stoked to have amazing allies and volunteers and just friends joining up, being a part of the challenge. And whether you want to make a small donation or contribute uh, to the person you are supporting, it all goes along to supporting this. And it kicks off on Monday. So if you haven't yet, um, you know, head to the, our website, speak, uh, speakupforclimate.com.au, uh, and you can still register before midnight tonight. And it kicks off Monday, um, which is actually really great because it finishes on September 25th. And I think that's a great segue into you know, school strike for climate and then a massive event, you know, would be uh, young people, both uh, non-Indigenous and Indigenous are having these conversations and we're leading up to this school strike for climate action. And together we are going to sound amazing. And I can't wait. <laughs> That's awesome. Can I ask, um, like I myself are quite new to understanding all the stuff that's happening around fracking. Um, what What is the feedback that you have when you do have these conversations with people? Tasha, I would love to know um, from your perspective first, after you became involved with um, School Striker for Climate Change and you were having these discussions and a part of this big movement that happened across Australia, what was one of the, what were some of the interesting things that you found out when you were having discussions with either like your parents or other school students about what was happening in Australia? I think what's really interesting when I'm having these discussions with other people is like how uneducated a lot of people are um like for like information I think is like really big and I think it's everywhere like I'm talking to people at school or I'm talking to like my parents and they have no idea what's going on so I think it's so so important to just be like having these discussions um and just like not only having discussions with like people who like you know are aware of all these things but like having discussions with people who might not be like as aware of like what's going on in Australia because I think it's so important to like keep everyone educated because you know um, especially because a lot of people in school strike like we're all like I'm 16 so in a few years I'll be able to vote um, and so will like lots of people I know and I think it's really important that like we educate ourselves and educate our friends um, because like soon we'll be able to like have a say in like who is leading our country which I think it's like so important and like we really need to like take that power back into our hands and say like we are the future so like it's really important and I think it's just like super surprising how much people don't know about a lot of things. When you um, first started off with um, activism, did you find the community was really supportive in helping inform you about what was happening and educate you outside of school? Definitely. I think 
the climate movement is one of the most welcoming communities like I've ever like been in because um you feel really safe and comfortable to just like ask a question I'm just, just like oh like I'm really confused what's this going on and someone is just like totally just sort of there to explain it to you or like I mean everyone's always happy to clarify things because everyone's just so welcoming and understanding um and everyone understands that everyone comes from different backgrounds and not everyone will know everything about something and I just think it's so great how like people use really accessible language and just make things super accessible to lots of people in the space and like sort of no one really gets left behind um and I think it's just super great um Tish uh did you find that as well with seed mob there was there a lot of mob that were wanting to find out where they could help and where the information was and was and was uh it did did the empowerment come from being in that safe space definitely i mean look at our outlook right now you know just with everything that is happening, you know, we're seeing governments and corporations, you know, back to all these decisions and use this landscape to mask what is really happening and what they're trying to do. And this is exactly right. Being able to connect still virtually through our fellowship and just checking in with our volunteers, we've been able to actually talk about, you know, what's happening and why it's just more now than ever, we really have to drive this and action and support, you know, our campaigns and those communities that aren't able to have their voices elevated at this moment. And mm. so it's definitely been a positive space um, and an empowering space and an, a supportive space during this time, you know, mentally, emotionally, and importantly, physically. Um, you know, I guess we've really learned a few lessons during this time, like the importance of connection. And now I'm never going to take it for granted and embrace, you know, every experience as possible as I can. So, mm. no, it's great. Love that. And again, the initiative um, and the campaign, it's a really beautiful peer-to-peer -peer campaign when you can talk to people, find out information and join this beautiful, open and safe space. Um, it's called Speak Up and you can find it at speakupforclimate.com.au. It's running from Monday officially till uh, almost the 25th of September. Um, you can be a part of these conversations and also help support and raise funds for SEED and have amazing people like Tish King doing amazing things and also the Australian Youth Climate Coalition um, and help our youth like the amazing Tash who's come on here and spoken with us today. They've already almost hit uh, $10,000 and I think we should just aim high and aim big and make sure that our country is safe. And speaking of warm and beautiful experiences, I'd like to thank Tish and Tash for both sharing their knowledge with us online <laughs> in this space. It's been thank so you. gorgeous. <laughs> it goes so quickly. <laughs> it does, it really does. Um, look forward to hanging out again. And to take us off, um, Lisa Mitchell is going to finish our Climate Fridays with her beautiful music. Um, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us and being a part of this conversation um, and also for um, enlightening me and, and I guess many others as well with your music and with the messages that you're sharing. Thank you, Tashi. Thank you so much for holding this space. Um, all of the, um, yeah, all of the Climate Fridays have just been so, so beautifully held. And so, yeah, thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> so um, this is a, this is a song called Let Me Stay Here. And um, I suppose as a person of settler colonial descent, um, my relationship with land is obviously very different to a First Nations person from this so-called Australia. And so, um, and yet I have such reverence for where I am. And, and um, this song is about um, uh, wanting to connect in the ways that I do and that I can. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let me stay here I long to 
touch the fruit as they're turning from green to Let me stay here long enough to see the painted world and there dancing free. Let me stay here long enough to know. Let me be the light around the fire. Let me stay here in your arms. Let me stay here long enough to love. Oh, love that so much. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, and thank you to everyone who has been enjoying and loving the conversation and streaming here on Climate Fridays. It's been an absolute pleasure, Lisa, to have you here and so excited to be back next Friday with more great conversations and great music. Until then, stay safe, look out for each other and ciao.